Hello everybody, back out William here. So today is Wednesday, which means it's time for another ponderous topic for us all to consider. And this week's ponderous topic is going to be looking at proof coins and collectible kind of numismatics and the sad fate which awaits the vast majority of them. Now I kind of want to focus a little bit on the kind of flop side of the market. Now the vast majority of these kind of proof coins that we see coming out every year will eventually end up in a pile of scrap like some of the coins on the table here. Now before I go into any more detail and start showing you these coins just to let you know and you can probably hear I have a horrible horrible case of man flu at the moment uh, and my voice is very hoarse. Yesterday when I was trying to film this video I lost my voice halfway through um, and I wasn't able to finish the video but I've set myself the schedule of having a video up on a Wednesday so I'm going to soldier on, go through the video, hopefully my voice won't give out and get you this video up on Wednesday but if I cough and splutter and lose my voice halfway through I do apologise. So, proof coins, you know, I'm a big fan of proof coins. I think you've probably guessed that. You've seen quite a lot of different proof coins on the channel before. I've shown stuff that I've bought from the Royal Mint. I've shown stuff which I've bought from um, private mints, from PowerCoin, for example. Um, and, you know, I do think that there is a place in, well, there's certainly a market for them, and I do think there's a place in my stack, in my collection, for those types of coins. I really do enjoy them, and I think they're a great way of having that kind of long-term commemorative thing if it's something that's in you know inspiring to you or you enjoy then I think it's something for you and it's something for most people there's, there's something out there for everybody however they are a risky investment and they do come with a lot of pitfalls now on the table here you can see a giant pile of scrap silver uh, and this scrap silver contains the majority of this contains just scrap one ounce coins which I bought two years ago when spot was very very low uh, and these represent just weight for me, that's why they're all out on the table, scratching each other up, getting fingerprints and everything, um, and I really don't care too much about them. Um, however, on the top of the pile you can see some which are slightly different. Uh, now these were sent to me by a Silver Forum member specifically for melting, uh, and that is the sad fact of the matter, that the vast majority of a lot of these sort of special collectibles which were brought out to celebrate things in the past, they will just end up being scrap and they will just end up getting melted down by somebody like me or somebody uh, you know like a bullion dealer who's just taken them and then wants to have one giant ingot rather than a whole bunch of scrap coins. Uh, this one is the centennial Canadian con uh, centennial anniversary of the Canadian Confederation and it's a really cool coin I really do like this kind of compass feel it's very much like that pieces of eight coin that I saw I put on in Focus Friday a few weeks ago. Um, but, you know, the sad fact of the matter is, it is going to be melted at some point. It's in my, this is my melt stack. All of these coins will get melted down for backyard bullion at some point. Uh, and the Silver Forum member that bought these, he didn't buy these when they came out and had them sitting in a drawer somewhere and then eventually decided to sell them. He just bought them because somebody was selling them at dirt cheap and he wanted to have some of my hand-poured silver, sent them to me, and I'm going to melt them down. And that's the sad fact. That's the sad fact about a lot of these. You know, a lot of them will end up like that. But why? Why should that happen? Well, I think we've got to just examine one key thing about um, you know the proof coin market. A proof coin is specifically designed and priced to make as much money as possible for the mint. Um, you know, I, I did a video last week which was talking about the raw mint. Are they opportunistic money grabbers? Yes, no, whatever the answer is, their mandate is to make money. Their mandate is to make money for the UK government. Um, and they do that very well by creating these proof coins. You know, in terms of the raw metal weight, often they'll be selling at, um, you know, sometimes 100% premium, if not a little bit more. Um, and, you know, that's just the sad fact of it. You will be paying a huge premium on these, which kind of means that you're a bit stuck with it if it turns out to be a little bit of a flop or you're going to end up taking. A big hit. Now of course every now and again you get a complete winner and we've seen that in the past. Uh, the most recent one that springs to mind is the Peter Rabbit coin. Uh, you know that one really did do incredibly well and we've seen um, you know that one changing hands for oh, 10, 11, 12 times what it, was bought, what it was bought for. But will it still be achieving that kind of you know return on investment in 40 years time, 50 years time. So you see a lot of these coins that I've been showing here, they're all from the 1960s. And, uh, you know, that's 50 years ago now. And uh, the sad fact of it is that they're all just scrap. Nobody remembers this. And I'm sure at the time, um, you know, we've got here William I, 
crowned at Westminster in 1066, and you know this is the anniversary of the Battle of Hastings, presumably, I don't really know. Um, but it's just the sad fact of the matter that this is now scrap. And will that happen to every single proof coin out there in the world? Well, yeah, maybe, but um, you know there are a few proof coins from the from the 1800s, that Victorian proof coins, which are now worth tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, even sometimes. Um, but you know the vast majority, no, it's not going to. And certainly nowadays, when there's a vastly, vastly larger number of these types of coins, for example, like the 2018 sovereign that we're seeing coming out next year from the Royal Mint, uh, you know, it's got something like 13,000 mintage. You know, the the proof coins back from the 1800s certainly didn't have that much of a mintage at all. So yeah, proof coins, it's going to end up on my melting table probably one day or somebody else's. That's the sad fact of it. So how can you protect yourself against these types of things? Well, there are lots of different ways of doing that. First of all, don't buy any at all. Second of all, uh, you can do a little bit of kind of self-taught research on these types of things, you know, look to see what's going to be best in the marketplace, see what history has uh, has done well for in the past. So we've seen, you know, the coin like the, I think it's the 1989 Sovereign, that one continues to do incredibly well even to this day. Uh, it's really performing exquisitely well and, uh, you know, so if there's another kind of special Sovereign that comes out like that one, like we saw with the 2017 uh, strike on the day sovereign or the special anniversary editions like the or, or, or even like the Piedfort sovereign brand new different you know these are all cat you know, these are all uh, coins which are contenders in my eyes for being kind of the next big thing in 20 30 40 years however finding those is going to be hard and obviously buying you know all of the proof releases that come out in a 2017 I, I, I talked about this last week as well you know you're gonna have to spend ten thousand pounds to get every single one of the proof kind of gold sovereigns just to try and work out which one is going to be the ultimate winner and even if you do get one in there which is the ultimate winner uh, it might well be that some of them are flops and you'll lose money on them or you'll just have your money tied up in them for a very long time now what I do is I will consider you know the coin I will consider what it looks like how it feels how I feel about it I think it's really important as well because ultimately I'm, I'm buying this just to kind of have for myself um, as a kind of collectible and that's what I've done with the kind of Beatrix Potter 50p sets so I love Beatrix Potter I loved the books when I was growing up and um, you know I, I kind of looked at it in the sense that if the worst comes and I don't make any money on them then that's fine I haven't bought like hundreds of each one I've only bought one of each and that's it and that's fine I'll just have them I'll use them I'll enjoy them maybe one day I'll pass them down to friends or family guys you can hear my voice is running out now so I'm going to try and keep on going um, but you know, I'll, I'll give it off as a as a gift to somebody, to friends or family, or hand it down to my children in the future. And um, so there's various different things that come out of it. Now with the gold proof coins, the the way I look at it in that sense, because with those 50p proof coins, you've basically only got like four pounds of silver. So to get your raw weight investment back, um, you know, you're going to be having to have silver at some, you know, it's going to have to be like. 15 times the value that it is now for for you to get the kind of you know value back in terms of just the raw weight of silver and that's probably never going to happen however with the gold when you're only getting you know 70 80 percent premiums you know in 30 years time you would hope that gold will have doubled trebled quadrupled even more and then at least you're going to get your money back um, albeit you're not going to necessarily get the same value of you know preservation of wealth but you'll get some money back at the end of it in terms of the raw value so gold proof coins tend to be a lot safer than silver proof coins because just of the nature of the metal it's more valuable generally and you tend to have not quite as high premium levels on them um, you know a prime example is like the sort of proof two ounce uh, well the proof I should say one ounce uh, Queen's B series they are they're something like 400% premium whereas the you know the proof the gold proof ones are only about 70% premium so there's a huge difference in premium look guys my voice is about to run out so I'm gonna wrap it up here basically proof coins bit of risky, a lot of them end up here on the melting table. Guys, if you like this video as much as it was uh, me just rambling with a croaky voice about proof coins, then please do comment, please do put a thumbs up on this video, that would be very helpful indeed. Make sure to check out my 2000 subscriber giveaway if you haven't already, there's a link in the description below. And otherwise, please make sure that you like, share, comment and subscribe for more.